Hi, it's Lucy, your Animal Behaviour Coach, and I'm here today with Hannah Bancroft, hydrotherapist and groomer at Woof and Ready in Glossop. Hi, Hannah. Hi. <laughs> Hannah and me have been planning this video for a while now. Oh, ages. <laughs> and Hannah has been collecting mats. I have. Please, could you tell us about your board, Hannah? So, this is my lovely board of mats. Um, it contains many different mats from different breeds of dogs and different areas of the dogs that mat up. Um, this large one at the back is quite a, it's rather, quite a hairy rather one. Rather fabulous. Yes, <laughs> uh, this came from a very lovely Labradoodle that was just turning into a adult, so he was just about 10 months old and unfortunately the owners thought that they had brushed him correctly but it only brushed the top of his coat and not the underneath, which meant that this lovely implement came off him. Wow. Which was excellent. Um. <laughs> so this particular owner of a Labradoodle, yes. they'd been brushing their dog. Yes. But they hadn't actually got down to the skin. Is no. That what you're yeah, so they'd only brushed the top layer. Um they'd probably use like um a puppy brusher, like a really, really soft, slicker brush, which would have been fine when the dog was like three months old. But later on, when it started to get its adult coat through, it just wasn't cutting it, unfortunately. Right. What's the difference between puppy coat and adult coat? So puppy coat is very fluffy. It doesn't really have much water resistance or anything like that. Um, and when they come to about nine months old, the puppy coat starts to grow out and the adult coat comes through. And because it's so fluffy, it mats together really tightly. Oh. So oh, unfortunately, right. that is why a lot of puppies, if they don't come in to be groomed regularly at the start, will mat up. How old would you recommend a puppy comes in first? Say a Labradoodle. Yeah. How so old? Probably from when they first can come in, so like 15, 16 weeks old when they've had their jabs, just to get used to all the environment of the grooming salon, all the different noises, stuff like that. They won't be cut or anything at that stage. They'll just have a little bath, trim in between their eyes and around their feet, stuff like that. And then keep it regular after that, about eight weeks, six to eight weeks. And if you have, what, what else has got a coat like a Labradoodle? So you've got your Labradoodles, your Cockapoos, Jackapoos, all sorts, all your mixed breeds, all your cross breeds with Poodles and Bichons are always pretty. Okay, and what should they be doing? What, the, what should the owners be doing in between visits to the so groomer? The owners should be brushing their dogs every day um, and if the dog gets wet, they need to brush them and they need to dry them as well especially because as soon as they get wet, if they're not brushed, then that's when the mats will come. Okay, <laughs> and what should they be brushing them with? So, these are a few of the brushes. So, a simple greyhound comb. You can pick these up from absolutely Why is anywhere. Why called greyhound comb? I don't really know. <laughs> I have no idea. Okay. Because you, you wouldn't use you that on a greyhound. You would never use that on a greyhound. No, I know. <laughs> but, yeah, so a greyhound comb, some of them you get thinner edges and then thicker ones. This one's just all the way along. Um, it's really, really good. Really good because you can get right down. There's no dogs really at puppy stage that have got longer fur than that. So just get right down to the roots and brush them out. Um, if you're scared of using a comb or you think it's a bit harsh, there's always slicker brushes like this. So this is a two prong side one. You've got the bigger side and then the smaller side. This one is probably better for your puppy side. And then as you get older, the bigger one, cause it gets down to the root more. Um, but you can get these in different hardnesses. So this is the hardest one that you can get. Um, and what's hard about it? So the bristles are hard and then it doesn't have as much flexibility. So you can get a green one, which is for your really, really small puppies. And that's really, really, really flexible. And the bristles ah. aren't quite as harsh. And then the purple one is a step up, which is probably good for like your, what, four month, five month old dogs. Um, which still, it still, it really helps. This one is a slightly harsher one, which you probably use on your um, adult. Okay. Like golden doodles, labradoodles, stuff like that. Okay. I yeah. feel. Nice. It's quite hardy. It's got a bit of giving it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It won't hurt your hand when you're doing it, and it'll give it. It's got a bit of giving the for the hair as well. Ah. Okie dokie. <laughs> um, what? So, Sorry, let's go back to your mats. Show me about your mats. So these are a lot of mats. So this one up here was from a Shih Tzu cross with a poodle. Um, these ones were armpit mats. Armpit mat. Can yeah. I take it off the board? I mean, show you may the if you want to. <laughs> okay. So you've got two armpits. Lovely. <laughs> I know they were really nice. So surely that must have um, started to restrict movement. Maybe? Yes. Yeah. Definitely. I think it did. The dog looked a lot freer once the mats were out. Um, the dog wore a harness, and unfortunately, 
I think it wore a harness quite a lot and it went out in the water in the harness and they just, you don't think about brushing under your dog's armpits. It's not something that people do. They don't go, oh, so yeah, okay. that's, that's quite common in a lot of dogs are armpit mats. Armpit mats, poodle, this was poodle cross shih tzu. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A sheep poo. A sheep poo, <laughs> as some people call them. <laughs> okay. So then... This one here was a Cocker Spaniel's ears, like behind the ears mats. Oh, okay. These are nice ones. Show me. Yeah, so I think there's two. Oh no, this one may have just been one. So basically it was all the way behind its ear and then this was part of the like long bit of the ear. Um, a lot of... So that's quite substantial. Yeah, it's quite a heavy mat. Yeah. And it's quite thick as well, like you would not have been able to brush through that at all. Okay. they're not the best <laughs> and at the groomers do you um go through the mats and cut them out before or after a bath um so normally we do after a bath so that we can blast away the hair as much as we can from the skin and then you don't have to take such a short blade underneath it because you can get a little bit of room in between right because these do feel clean to me yeah they are yeah. <laughs> all of them are very clean <laughs> lovely okay but, oh Okay, and is there a difference with the sorts of brushes you'd use for a cocker than you would for a poodle or bichon cross? Um, for the cocker, you'll probably use a similar similar brush for them, and um, they've both got kind of a longish coat, um, and like a silky coat. The the poodle crosses have got a curl in their coat, but you still need the same implement to kind of get into that. Okay, but no, I think that. The dogs that need different brushes are like your double coated breeds, like your uh, golden retrievers and stuff like that. And your huskies will need a different brush. That's my husky. <laughs> She's like, give me a brush. <laughs> um, and then like your short coated dogs, so like your Rottweilers, your Labradors, stuff like that. They don't have quite as harsh a brushes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I recognise this sort of mat. This yeah. is from the Border Collie. Whereabouts yeah. did this, this come is, from? These are ears as well. That's the oh, lovely ear. Yeah. Oh, my. That is, wow, that is chunky. That is a chunky And that mat. was an ear? That was behind the ear of a Border Collie. Okay. And you normally see, like, this frayed edge on the edges of Border oh. Collies, and they're like, oh, look, it's really pretty. Please keep that. But then this is normally attached yes. to the end of it. So I'll feel little tiny ones beginning yeah. with Moby, but Moby comes in for a, for a groom about every eight weeks, and yeah. you blast him out at Hydro every week. So um, so they, they don't... They, they've never... No. Like, they've never, never been like this. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good mat, that okay. one. And that's the matching... That's yeah, the that matching was the, the other side. Side. <laughs> All right. And um, so you're recommending with Border Collies... Just so, the, yeah. So I'd recommend one of these brushes and then behind the ears especially the comb is really good to get because it's, it's quite an intricate area to get into. But yeah. And you both. get short coated collies and you get long yeah. fluffy collies. Um, what would you recommend? Um, ha what should people be doing who own a border collie? Like mine for example. Yeah. So people with border collies should probably bring them in every like six to eight weeks as normal. Um, the short coat of border collies. Let me just, sorry, I'll interrupt you and just <laughs> let them out. What are they you doing? Says, I want to be a border collie. Do them every time they get wet, similar with your puppies. Um, and keep on top of their long bits, so like behind their legs especially, around their bum and stuff like that, and behind their ears, really yeah. focus on them areas. Moby's bottom gets really, really hairy. Yeah, it's it's a really common thing with your border collies, like your uh, golden retrievers, German shepherds, stuff like that. Yeah. It is hard to get to. <laughs> Okie dokie. I'm trying to think of what else is on here. This is a lovely Cocker Spaniel cross with Poodle. She okay. was She wasn't really that that bad, but there's still a, a fairly alright mat there. So this coat feels slightly more wiry to me than any of the other ones yeah. we've got so far. I think the Cocker Spaniel probably gave that kind of coat. And to be fair, I think that once unfortunately the dog was quite matted but once the coat had come off because she was becoming an adult that if it gets more of the wire in the coat probably won't mat up too badly next time ah, round okay i think it was just a lot of puppy that kind of came through at that stage and that's why that she was very matted <laughs> is there quite a lot of variability in the coats of the crosses and um, yes a lot so like your labradoodles some can come in and they can look exactly like a labrador with just like a little tiny curl in their coat or be slightly taller and then other labradoodles can come in and look exactly like a standard poodle and you just think oh so 
it's, you don't really know what you're getting, unfortunately, when you get a Labradoodle or you get a Cockapoo or a Cabochon. You could get two extremes. Mm -hmm. So I suppose it's important for those owners to bring them in and make sure yeah. they're caring for their coat the best way. Yeah, and we can always advise on what kind of care that they need when we see the dog. It's a lot easier to see the dog and see the coat before over the phone it's really hard because there's so many different varieties of Labradoodle or Cockapoo. Yes. <laughs> and Fist says, please let me in, Samson. <laughs> Okie dokie. Right, now this one looks pretty... Oh, oh. Oh, yeah. This one was um, a Westie. A Westie? A lovely Westie. You can... You so a Westie, like. I won't keep it, but thank you. <laughs> so that surprises me. I don't oh, does know. It? Yeah, I didn't know Westies would mat up like yeah, that. Yeah, so um some Westies Westies are kind of I think they're supposed to be wire coated because they're terriers, but some of them are really, really fluffy and they're almost like cotton wool. And yeah. unfortunately the cotton wool in it really gives it a good a good mat. <laughs> um so yeah, they, they seem to have quite, uh, some of them have quite a lot of undercoat that comes out and if you don't keep the undercoat coming out, then it will start to mat up. So whereabouts on the dog did this come from? This was a legs, so this was like front leg and I think that was kind of thigh area. Okay, so like the back of the front leg? Or... No, like the front of the front leg. Oh, wow. Yeah. it It's really hard with Westies because you can kind of, their coat kind of like, layers over itself and you think oh it's not that bad but actually underneath they are <laughs> quite matted okay um, so as a westy owner which one of these tools would you be using so i'd probably using the slicker brush for the westy owner because you really need to get down into deep layers of the comb rather than the comb a lot the comb it's because they're quite a small dog probably wouldn't be quite as easy to use on them okay and you're saying if they're wet yeah. brush them yeah dry them dry them and how often would a westie need to come in similar about six to eight weeks six uh weeks. depending on the cut that they have if they have everything off then it might be a little bit longer depends how much they grow back and how quickly but yeah if you want them with a nice westie cut with the longer legs and the longer face six to eight weeks is probably ideal fabulous lovely westie okay <laughs> So you've made some lovely notes on here. I have, about different types of coat breeds. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them have different coats. So like this brush, this is a Zoom Groom that we use at work. Um, this is really good for your short-coated dogs. So like your Labradors, your Bulldogs, Bull Terriers. Um, yeah, anything with like a really short coat that comes out, you see hairs everywhere. These are excellent. And you can't really go wrong with one of these. There's no blade in it. There's nothing that you they can feel cut. feel nice. Yeah. Um, a lot of people use them to massage their dogs as well. You know, just give them a little nice rub down. But yeah, they're kind of foolproof. Anyone can use one. And they, they're really good, especially in the bath as well. If you want to lather the dog up, it gets, it's really good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. I'm actually going to bring Viv in. Are you? Yeah, would you like to come in? Viv says, me? yes, please. Because I know we're going <laughs> to... I know we're going to talk about... You can't eat the hair. <laughs> I know you want to. We're going to talk about husky coats. You. Now, Viv has started to blow her coat about a week ago. Have you? You can't tell. Um, I saw one in the park this morning and you could really, really tell. But because you... Because you... Um, let's move this out of the way a moment. Come here, honey. <laughs> She's like, hi. What are you doing? Oh, me, wait, hang on, there's a pit of hair. <laughs> I'll just give you a stroke while this is. There we go. All right. Uh, because she is um, bathed by you at hydrotherapy she is. and blasted by you every week, she's not got the huge no. clumps. Yeah. But I think most huskies at this time of the year, they're coming out in real clumps. If you've not seen a husky molting, you're missing something. It's, it's like clouds, <laughs> isn't it? All right. So if if she had a, a, a fully molting coat, what would you be doing? Yeah. So I would suggest you book in with your grooming salon because what they will do is that they will um, bath your husky and then they will use the hydraulic blasters to get the coat out. If you wanted to do it at home... It would be a very tedious job and <laughs> you wouldn't get to the root because they've got such a dense coat. You need that blaster to get straight to the root for you to get the hair out. So a blaster, for anybody that doesn't know, it's like a, a vacuum cleaner in reverse. Yeah, it's like a big hydraulic hair dryer. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> it is. 
Yeah, and Viv actually quite enjoys that you now. You do, you quite like it now, All don't right. you? All right, so you're recommending it's a tedious job. Yeah. Take them in, have them blasted so that it gets right down to the skin. Yeah, because a lot of people, you can use brushes at home, so you could use like the rake at home, which is good because it does get to, oh, this is better. It does get to the root of the hair, but there'll be so much of it and it's just easier. I mean, no one wants a house covered in that amount that will come out of a husky. It is impressive. It is. <laughs> and this is only mild, isn't it? These little bits coming this out. This is like small. Yeah. Tiny. Okay. Okay. Tiny. She's like, ooh, they your eyes. Thank you. <laughs> and what about dogs with wiry coats? So dogs with wiry coats are actually quite easy to maintain because the wiry coat doesn't melt quite as much, which is excellent. Hello. Hi. You'll probably still need to use a comb on your wire coats if they're long coated wire coats, so if they're not like really, really short ones. Um, there's various different types of grooms that you can do on the wire coats. You could do hand stripping, so like people with border terriers sometimes have their dogs hand stripped. Right. Um, or people do it at home as well a lot of the time. It It's very, very tedious <laughs> and it takes a long time to do. Um, yeah. Yeah, I know. Especially if you're only doing one section at a time. But the wire coats are quite easy to look after. You've got oh. quite an easy dog. <laughs> now, um, a double coat breed like Viv, yes. I don't think I don't think she uh, mats. Would she mat if I let her go long um, enough? Um, yeah. Oh. So sometimes the undercoat can get stuck. So her her bottom coat can get stuck. Oh, did that take you by surprise? Oh. <laughs> And if the bottom coat gets stuck, then um, it can mat up. Right. Um, only in really extreme cases. So, you know, like um, huskies that live outside or because the weather kind of keeps the coat in and then with the rain and everything like that, it kind of compacts it down. And if you see a double coated dog that is really, really matted, right. that's possibly when you see them shaved because there's right. kind of no good. If, you, if it's so compacted that you can't get it out, this I've seen golden retrievers are a, a double coated breed as yes, well. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, I think they've got a longer coat than a, yes, than a they have. husky. Now I've seen them shaved off. Yeah, so they shouldn't they shouldn't be shaved because obviously their coat is made for them and it helps them regulate their temperature. So if you shave down their coat, you're shaving off their top coat, which is something that helps them breathe and helps them aerate. I think this is something owners don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they get their dog shaved off. Thinking it'll be cooler. Mm -hmm. And then unfortunately it's not because the dog is adapted to having that coat. Mm -hmm. um, and you can cause all sorts of problems. You have sunburn and all sorts if the coat's shaved down too small. There's, there's a lot of things that... Yeah, shouldn't be done. I understand. So it's like insulation on your thermos flask. It'll keep yeah. your drink cold or it'll keep your drink warm. Yeah, that's exactly what it's like. But some people think, oh my gosh, my dog's got so much coat, let's just shave it all off. And unfortunately, that's not the best for the breed. And is there any long-term damage that's done if you actually shave your dog off? Um, It depends. There can be. She's definitely on the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> so um, with... Some breeds, if you shave them off before, like, you're nine months of age, so when they've still got the puppy coat, you can cause damage to the hair follicle and it can cause a different kind of coat or a different colour of coat to come through after. Wow. So, like, your really bright red ruby cavaliers, if you shave them when they're so young, they can cause, like, a dulling of the coat. Um, each dog is different. Some dogs might not grow back some dogs will grow back in patches some dogs will grow back absolutely fine it just really depends on the breed of the dog okay well i won't be shaving Viv or Moby anytime no. soon <laughs> they would not look ex excellent in that have you got any top tips for owners um yeah so i'd say definitely try and brush your dog regularly and try and make it as fun as possible don't make it into a chore the best advice is Give your dog an area that they think that is where we are groomed. So either a specific table or a chair and that is where the grooming goes on. Because if you do it on the floor and they're rolling about, it then becomes a game. <laughs> and then they like to eat the brush and all sorts. So if you can have a specific table where they know, yeah, this is where I get groomed, this is what I do, then it's normally easier. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I'd say bring the dog in as soon as possible to the to the groomy salon. She said, I've been there, I have. Yes, I knew. It was really fun, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Then my eyes. Cool. Yeah. Cool. <laughs>
But yeah, I'd say bring your dog in as soon as possible to the grooming salon and then we can kind of have like a treatment plan for them. What we're going to do, how we're going to do it. And then you can have your dog at the desired length that you want and what's best for your lifestyle as well. Okay. Well, lovely. Thank you very much for coming no and talking. No problem. I've had lots of requests for a video like this. So thank you, Anna. <laughs> We've been planning it for a while. We have. And now Viv's a star of it as well. Yes. A very hairy star. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, what? Well, thanks very much for watching. I hope you found it helpful. I'll be back again, so make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on the next video. Bye. <laughs>